Hey, welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark. I'm so excited that you've connected to our page today. Be sure to grab a notebook, a pen, a paper, your phone, however you wanna take notes and get ready for today's message. We are starting a brand new series today called Ghosted, ghosted. Uh, we have a one month devotional available to you today that's going to go along with this teaching on the Holy Spirit, on the Holy Ghost. If you'd like a paper copy of that, uh, we have them available at the Welcome Center. If you want to follow along throughout the month in the YouVersion Bible app, if you open your YouVersion Bible app, there's a button in the bottom right hand corner that says more. You click the event button and you search Family Church NY, it will pop up as a, a digital copy of this devotional every single day. You can sign up for it, and if you save your notes in it, it'll save it to your YouVersion Bible app account. It's pretty cool, all right? That's cool. Amen. All right. Have you ever been ghosted by somebody? If you're over 50, you may not know what that means. Ghosting is when someone who used to be friendly or even in a relationship with you suddenly cuts off all communication with you without explanation. You got ghosted. There was this one time I was in high school and I ghosted like, and I'm gonna talk to the younger crowd for a second. You get ghosted, that means that out of nowhere, no more text messages, no more phone calls, no more snaps, no more DMs. If you're over 30, you might not know what I just said. <laughs> There's this one time in high school where my best friend was dating a girl from Goshen. Now, we were from Pine Bush, so you were dating across enemy lines. This was a high-risk dating situation, all right? But he's dating this girl from Goshen, and she has a friend that she wants to hook me up with. So I give my number to my friend that gives it to his girlfriend that gives it to her friend that, you know what I'm saying, that she can get a hold of me. Now, the reason why we had to give phone numbers was because this was before social media. This was before Snapchat. This was before, you know, this was before AOL. This was before we had cell phones that we would text each other. We had a phone on the wall with a cord. We had a phone on the wall with a cord. And if you wanted privacy, you got your parents to buy a longer cord. If you're over 40, you know what I'm talking about. That cord was through all the hallways of the house. Come on, all right. Anyway, the moment finally came where me and this girl were gonna meet. We had been talking on the phone for weeks, and we got along, and everything was great, and so I was on the soccer team for Pine Bush, and Pine Bush was gonna play Goshen at Goshen. She was gonna come to the game. So I was like, all right, girl, bet. You're gonna meet me, my number's 23, find me on the soccer field, yeah, and I was so excited. She was like, all right, I'll be the girl wearing a red baseball hat. So the whole game, I'm out there like trying to play, but I'm looking for this red hat. The whole game, the red hat, the whole game, the red hat, that never showed up. Red hat never showed up. No more phone calls. When I would call, no more answer. Ghost at me. Come to find out, little Miss Pretty was at the game. But when she saw me, and my number 23, she thought I was ugly. <laughs> and so because she thought I was ugly, she never put her red hat on to identify, oh, I didn't realize I got set up. I didn't realize this was a whole conspiracy set up that she was gonna like not have the red hat until she saw me. Like it was all this whole plan thing, I didn't know. But I got ghosted and guess what, that hurt. That hurt, man. Because I was looking for that hat. I was sitting in anticipation, waiting. Ghosted. No explanation. No more communication. And you know, I, I can almost relate. 
I, I think that the disciples in the Bible, I think they somewhat felt ghosted by Jesus. He tried to explain. He tried to inform them. He tried to get them ready that I'm gonna disappear, I'm gonna go away, so just be ready for it. Let's take a look. In, in John 14, Jesus speaking, he says, all this I have spoken while still with you, but the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and will remind you everything I have said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. Jesus is pretty much saying, I'm about to peace out. Get it? Yes, I'm about to peace out. Do not, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. And here's the truth. When you feel like you're ghosted, it's very easy to feel troubled. I felt troubled that I never saw that red hat at my soccer game. I felt troubled. Like, you know, at first it's like, oh my gosh, maybe something happened to her. And come to find out, it had nothing to do with her. It was me. I was ugly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It troubled me. It hurt. And Jesus is saying, listen, I don't give to you like the world gives. You see, the world, we all give, and I know, I know you don't want to hear this, but it's true. We all give conditionally. We all give conditionally, okay? Just facts. Buy somebody a Christmas gift, and then they not give you one back. And at first, you're like, oh, no, no, it's, no, it's cool. Like, I, I, didn't, I didn't buy it to get anything back. I just bought it because, you know, we're friends and I love you. And then the second year, you buy them a gift, and they don't get, give one back. And now it's like, oh, you know, I, maybe there's a misunderstanding. I didn't realize we weren't exchanging gifts anymore. <laughs> Are we not exchanging gifts anymore? Third year, you ain't buying a gift for this person. <laughs> Come on, man. Can we be for real? Like, we do this. I love you. I'm so in love with you until you hurt me. Do we need to reconsider this relationship? No, I thought you loved me. Well, I do love you as long as you're reciprocating this same amount and value of love back to me. But when that's not happening, when my love tank's not being filled, I don't love you anymore. So Jesus is saying, I don't give to you the way the world does. I don't give to you based upon conditions. I give in a different way. He says, yes, I'm ghosting you. But I'm not ghosting you the way the world ghosts you. I'm holy ghosting you. I'm holy ghosting you. I'm going to leave, but I'm going to send another. I'm going to send one who's going to operate differently than I ever could, and he will never leave you. He will never forsake you. You heard me say I'm going away, and I'll be coming back to you. If you love me, you would be glad that I'm going to the Father, for the Father is greater than I. Watch. He says, I have told you now before it happens, so that when it does happen, you will believe. He said, listen, I'm preparing you so you don't feel ghosted but I understand right now that you don't believe. And that's kind of like the issue of the world today. Like, we, we have a form of godless and believe in a level of God, but we don't really believe that there's gonna be an end of the world soon. Because if we really believe that, we'd live in a sense of urgency that heaven is a real place that I need to prepare for. I'm just saying. I'm throwing these things out. Jesus says, you know it. You've heard it. But do we really believe? He says, but you will. You'll believe. You'll see it. Here's why I'm ghosting you. John 14, verse 16. He says, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another, a helper, that he may abide with you forever. The spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, you get that, right? Someone outside of Christ cannot receive the Holy Spirit because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he dwells with you, and he will, future, he will be within you. I will not leave you orphans. I will 
come again. So here we go. Jesus is leaving instructions of how he's about to Holy Ghost the world. He's about to Holy Ghost these people. He's about to peace out, but he's going to Holy Ghost them. And he's telling us what the ministry of the Holy Ghost is going to be. So throughout this series, we're first going to look at the ministry of the Holy Ghost. Next week, we're going to look at the man, the Holy Ghost. We're going to look at some of the myths of the Holy Ghost. So if you ever thought that being part of a spirit-filled church or watching a spirit-filled church online was weird, I agree. I agree. Uh, over the 26 years of ministry that I've been part of uh, and beyond that, 39 years, 39 years that my dad was in ministry, I'll admit we've been part of some weird, like we've seen some weird stuff, okay? But we're gonna break down some of the myths. Week four, Pastor Josh will be here with you. It will be the Sunday after his team camp, so hopefully they got a little bit of, of a spiritual hangover that they're gonna bring in on that Sunday, and then we'll close out this series on the 29th after our prayer meeting on the 28th. Jesus is saying this. I wanna, I wanna point this out to you, a few things about the ministry of the Holy Spirit and who he is. First, I want us to understand that the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is the third person in the Godhead. Has anybody in here, raise your hand at me, have you ever heard of the word the Trinity? Trinity, okay? So the word Trinity is not actually found in the Bible. It's a compound word, meaning tri-unity, that three beings, three persons being united as one, that they operate in the unity of one with one heart, one mind, and one purpose, yet three individual people, okay? This is what's known as the Godhead. So we have God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we find all three right here in John 14. Jesus is speaking, and he says, I will pray that the Father, Father, Son, will send another, the Holy Spirit. So we have the Godhead listed right here in this passage, the Trinity. And what's he gonna come do? What's this third person of the Godhead coming to do? He's called the Helper, the Helper. Does anybody need some help today? I, I think we all need help in something. If we need a helper, then we need the Holy Ghost. We could all use, a, not, not that we could get any more of the Holy Ghost, but we could use a little bit more Holy Ghost in our lives. A little bit more freedom of the Holy Ghost in our lives. Now watch this. In John 14, 26, it says this. Jesus told his disciples, but the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things. Teach. So what's he gonna help us with? He's gonna teach and bring to your remembrance all that I have said. So he's gonna teach us and he's gonna bring to our remembrance the things that we've learned. Now, here's the funny thing about the Holy Ghost and here's a misconception and I don't wanna jump into the myth yet, but I'll throw one out. Listen, if you don't ever read your Bible, if you don't ever hear Bible verses, the Holy Spirit is not gonna magically download the entire Bible into your brain. Oh, John 3, 16, and you've never heard it before. Come on, somebody. It says he'll bring to your remembrance what you've learned. So listen, you don't have to be a Bible scholar, but crack the book once in a while. Crack the book for three minutes a day. Get a YouVersion Bible app. Do a Devo. Get something in. Get, yo, give the Holy Spirit something to work with. <laughs> that's, like, that's like you wanting to buy a house, but you never save any money. You spend it all at Chick-fil-A. You can't spend all your money at Chick-fil-A and think you're going to buy a house. You can't go to the bank and withdraw money that you never put in. But go put your money in something, go find a financial advisor, invest in some mutual funds or some stocks, invest and let that person do something with what you gave them. Just like the Holy Ghost, man. Get some scripture in you and let the Holy Ghost do some stuff with it. 
and he'll bring to your remembrance in situations what you have been taught. Here's the word helper. The word helper is the Greek word parakletos. Am I saying that right? Parakletos. Yes, it's up on the screen. Parakletos. Huh? Parakletos. I can't say it. He don't have to come by the mic and say it. Parakletos. In this passage, it's the word helper in, in the uh, ESV, or in the NIV, it's the word advocate. In the King James Version, it's the word counselor. All of these words, the literal meaning of it is legal counsel. He's our legal counsel. The Holy Spirit's our legal counsel, which means he stands at our defense. He stands at our defense to remind us, to help us, to advocate for us. He's a wise counselor. And Jesus knew that he'd be going away, that we needed a helper, we needed an advocate to teach and remind us of his teachings. So who is the Holy Spirit? He's the third person in the Godhead. He's the helper. He's the counselor. He's our legal counsel. But what else is part of the Holy Ghost's ministry in the earth today? Let's talk about this. This is where we're gonna get a little dicey, okay? This is gonna be the part of the sermon that people are gonna send me bad Facebook comments. And I'm just putting that out there right now, okay? Because maybe you haven't been taught this way before or you have been taught this way before and now I'm gonna ruffle your feathers. Don't believe anything I'm about to say. If you believe anything I'm about to say, you're just blindly following somebody. Go look this up. And do not argue with me based upon something that you heard when you were five years old. <laughs> if you don't bring research, don't talk to me. Know what I'm saying? There's no argument based upon something you were taught by somebody else. This has to be your own personal divine revelation. Okay, we ready to get into this? Okay, John 16, 5. But now I go to him who sent me. So Jesus speaking, I'm going to the Father who sent me. And none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has already filled your heart. So he's like, I already see you guys are sad because you know I'm about to leave. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. Now ready? Watch this. And when he comes, his first job, He's going to convict the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment of sin because they do not believe in me, of righteousness because I go to my Father and you will see me no more, and of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear it now. Are you ready for this? This is one of the jobs of the Holy Spirit. This is an ongoing ministry of the Holy Spirit. Comforter, counselor, helper, and yes, the Holy Spirit convicts. But did you read the passage clearly with me? Because I don't think that we need a whole lot of articulation in this, because the Bible's very clear. Let's look at it once again. The Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will convict the world of sin. Do you know what that does not say? It does not say when he, the Holy Spirit, comes is going to convict the believers in the upper room of sin. What it does not say is the person who's committed the life to Christ and are washed in the blood of Jesus, the Holy Spirit's going to convict them every time they sin. I'll, I'll straight fight some I think I can take. But I think you're going to whoop my tail. I'm gonna try to like snuff and run. <laughs> Yo, I ain't no punk, I'm telling you straight out, that's the real deal. And when you think God is gonna snuff your tail every time you mess up, you're not gonna go to him and say, in your presence, because you're gonna be like. Because that's not good. That's not good. 
He said that he would convict the world of sin. You are no longer the world, but you are a saint. You're no longer the world, you are a saint. Watch this, Hebrews 12, five, it says, my son, look at total different subject matter. We're not talking the world, we're now talking sons and daughters. My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor be discouraged when you are corrected by him. There are times that you need a correction. You're heading down the wrong road. But you know what? Our minds a lot of times equates how our parents corrected us to how then God would be correcting us. If you ever got spanked, by a parent who had an angry look on their face, oh, knock it off. That was not correction, that was abuse. Right? You ever got spanked, I'm, I'm talking about in a godly home. You ever got spanked in anger, and then your parents back, like, come here, do you know why I did that? Because I love you. In my mind, every time I'm like, no, it's because you were angry and you beat me. <laughs> that was always in my mind. You spanked me out of anger, and then you blame it on God. That wasn't, that wasn't biblical correction. That was you getting your anger out. And so then we look at God the same way. Well, you know what? Every time I mess up, that, God's the same way. Because look at who's going to get me. Man, the world is judged. The world is judged. On the last days, man, when we go through the pearl and gates, and our names are found in the Lamb's Book of Life, we get to stand before the, the throne of grace. God looks through us differently because of the blood of Jesus Christ. I am not the world and you are not the world. I am a son. You are a son. Jude 1, 14. Watch this again. It talks about this. Jude 1, 14 through 15. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge the world, to judge everyone, and to convict all the ungodly of all the ungodly acts they have done in the ungodly way and of all the harsh words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. And here's been the fallacy, is that preachers would get up and say, hey guys, we are all sinners, saved by grace. We're just sinners hanging over a fire by an angry God. No, 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 that's not, that's not good. That's not good. I was a sinner and I got saved by some grace. My identity has changed. I can't identify as a sinner and a son at the same time. It can't happen. You can't serve two masters. You can't serve dark and light. All right, you know what I am? I'm a saint, I'm a son who messes up. But you can't change my identity back to who I was just because I mess up. Come on, come on parents, come on parents. Come on, your kid gets their license, they're 18. They take your car out for a date. They crash your favorite car. You got some explaining to do but do you stop being my child? No. No. But you messed up really bad. Do I stop loving you? No. I mean, do you know how much I love that car? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing that can undo the fact that you're my child. Can you hear God Almighty proclaim that to you today, there's nothing. The Bible says that you are sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit, sealed. It's like a Ziploc bag, baby. It's sealed. And no leakage. It ain't falling out by the Holy Spirit. And if you're being taught in any other way, then you're not hearing the gospel. You're not hearing what Jesus did for us. Amen. Now, so Bowser remark. What I'm hearing you say is that then we can just go do and sin and do whatever we want. Yo, know, if you heard that at all in my sermon, you have hearing problems. <laughs> I did not say that. What I'm saying is it is the goodness of God that leads men to 
repentance. It's because God is good that I can live good, but I will never live good believing wrong. I will never, listen, come on, man, listen. There's this greenhouse down the street over here. Do you know what I wanna do every time I drive by that greenhouse? I wanna throw a rock and break the windows. <laughs> Why? Just because there's evil in my heart. <laughs> but I didn't think, I didn't think of throwing rocks and breaking all his windows until he put a sign up that said, don't throw rocks. Well, now that you mentioned it, <laughs> do you know how fun it is to do something like that? Come on. See, there's this nature within us. There's this nature within us to kind of be like, test the boundaries of, well, I wouldn't have thought of doing this until you posted a law. Now that you posted a law, I want to rebel. And that's what the law was. The law was posted so that we were like, oh yeah, wait a second. I can't meet that standard. Wait, I asked for a couple rules, but then you went like way, way too far. You gave me like 360 something laws. I can't do that. I need help. I need a paracletos. I need a helper, a counselor. I need a savior. And it was the law that pointed us to grace. It was the law that pointed us to a savior that says, I need help. I need rescuing. I need salvation. If you're here today and you're like, I find myself so far from anything that's God, but I know I need help. Then what you need is the helper. The Bible says that when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that the Holy Spirit makes his home, his residence within us. We're gonna talk about what this looks like moving forward throughout the series. But the Holy Spirit comes in to abide and live within our spirit. Our spirit, man, is that thing that looks very much like our consciousness, it looks like our mind, it looks like our our. our our soul, they, they work in unison together. That's the part of humanity that lives forever. Our spirit and our soul, they will live forever. They unite together. And the Holy Spirit comes and brings to life your spirit, changes you from the inside out. And he helps you every single day in your walk. He reminds you of these teachings. He can bring peace that surpasses all understanding. That's why we were very intentional about our worship service today. We wanted you to experience some peace today in our worship service, in a spirit-filled church, in a spirit-filled worship environment. Now, notice we didn't do any really weird things. We weren't rolling around on the floor. Right? We didn't, we didn't, yeah, we weren't kicking anything weird. We weren't throwing up. We didn't start a laughing movement. Now, these things have all happened in moments of spirit-filled churches. What I'm saying is that the Holy Spirit can, is decent and he runs in order and he can be part of your everyday life to bring power and boldness. Maybe today, even during worship, you wanted to sing along and maybe you wanted to raise your hand but you kind of felt intimidated. You felt like uncomfortable, embarrassed, or shy. See, he, he'll bring that boldness to your life. He'll bring that boldness to your life. And all you have to do is receive him into your life, and we do that very simply here today. And again, I'm not saying that everything in your life's about to change just because you accept Jesus Christ, but it could, it could. Here at Family Church, we wanna offer you salvation. It's believing that Jesus Christ is your Lord and accepting him into your life. At that moment, the Holy Spirit comes to live and abide on the inside of you. And if you're here today or you're watching online, and today's your day. Today's the day where you're ready to make that decision to make Jesus Christ your Lord. Would you pray this prayer with me? And the whole room will repeat it with me as well to encourage you. It goes like this. Dear God, I come to you just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I invite you into my life to change me and to make me new. Thank you 
for accepting me. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you're watching this online and you prayed that prayer for the very first time, would you type amen in one of the chat rooms? One of our online hosts would love to follow up with you and send you our six-day devotional called Starting Point. If you're in the room and you prayed that prayer for the very first time today, would you give me the honor to celebrate you for two seconds and just wave at me real quick and say, hey, that was me. Yeah, I see you in the back. Anybody else real quick across the room? Awesome, awesome. Welcome home. We have that same devotional available right at our Welcome Center. Maybe you're here today and you say, I don't know about this whole church thing and a guy wearing a peach shirt on a Sunday morning, but I'm interested to find out more. We have a booklet at the Welcome Center called uh, Welcome Home, uh, and it just talks about what we believe here, and it has that same prayer at the end. Also, if you want the Acts, the Book of Acts study guide, so today we're gonna start all, the whole church, we're gonna start by reading Acts chapter one, um, that booklet is available at the Welcome Center, and if you want to follow along in the Version Bible app, hit more, events, and search family, space, church, space, and why, and six days will pop up immediately of our devotional ready to go for you. Now, you won't be able to store your notes in it until the day the devotional is live. All right, so today's devotional is already live in the app, and it's ready to go for you. Amen? Father, we thank you today that your word never returns to you void, but it accomplishes exactly what you set it forth to do. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for being our helper, our counselor, our advocate, our guide. We thank you for being here with us and rising on the inside of us and bringing to our remembrance all the things that we need to know according to your word. Fathers, leave here today. I bless everyone the sound of my voice. They are the head and not the tail above and ever beneath. Everything they set their hands to will prosper and be successful. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you. Thank you for watching today's message. My name is Ashley, and if this message has made an impact in your life in any way, I'd like to ask you to do a couple of things. First, we want you to like and subscribe to our channel and join us right here every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. The next thing I'm gonna ask you to do is take a next step on your journey, and we would love to help you do that. You can head on over to FamilyChurchNY.com or email us at team at FamilyChurchNY.com to get started today.